Hey guys, so the world has always been, and still is, full of things that look rather strange. Moreover, some ancient artifacts truly boggle the imagination and lead to the thought that civilizations with advanced science and technology had already existed on Earth in the past. The tiny African country of Gambia is considered one of the most underdeveloped. It has virtually no industrial base. They have only recently started using plows and equipped their canoes with motors in rural areas. However, tourism is developed along the Atlantic coast. The presence of Yundum International Airport, capable of receiving aircraft of any category, contributes to attracting tourists. The airport was built at the end of the 20th century with the assistance of NASA. It is this airport that is the favorite mystery of fans of alternative history and UFOologists. And it is one of the main mysteries of Africa. However, it isn't the airport itself that is intriguing, but its runway. It is the most expensive part of any air harbor. However, neither the country's authorities nor NASA built this runway. It already existed. It was made of precisely fitted, sand-colored stone slabs. It was built so expertly that all that was left to do was to add a layer of asphalt on top. The only issue was that the old runway was longer than required for modern aircraft takeoff and landing. So, where did this ancient runway come from in the depths of Africa? There is a theory that this runway is a legacy of an ancient advanced civilization that perished due to some natural disaster. In 1875, a treatise called the Vyamanika Shastra was discovered at one of the Indian temples. It was written in the 4th century BC and was based on even older documents. This treatise describes flying machines with technical characteristics similar to today's UFOs. These machines, called Vimanas, had a range of remarkable features. The text lists 32 major secrets of these Vimanas that made them formidable weapons. For example, numerous ruins dating back to the Sumerian era have been found in the Dikar Governorate. There were even remnants of an ancient aerodrome. It is believed that an unknown civilization didn't just use flying machines to move around the Earth, but also traveled to other planets. The age of the Yundum slabs has been tentatively determined by scientists to be around 10,000 to 12,000 years. It is possible that this was the launch site for the Vimanas mentioned in the ancient Indian treatise. Or the runway could have been a sophisticated aerodrome for other flying machines. Nobody knows for sure. There are plenty of artifacts that suggest the existence of highly advanced civilizations in the past. Visiting the city of Mingan in the Republic of Myanmar, you can see the incredible Mingan Bell. It was the largest bell in the world up until the year 2000, when it dropped to second place, after a larger one, the Bell of Happiness, rang in China. However, the Mingan Bell is indifferent to competition, as it has a rich history of its own. The alloy formula was developed based on five metals. In general terms, the recipe involved adding gold to copper, followed by silver, and only then iron. Lead was added at the very end. Thus, they didn't just get an excellent sound, but also remarkable durability. The Mingan Bell was cast in 1808 to 1810, and King Badwapaya personally supervised the bell casting process. Two barges were used to transport the 90-ton structure to its installation site, and two canals were dug to allow the barges to approach the construction site. When water rose in the canals during the rainy season, the bell was suspended on several logs lashed together and placed on two stone pillars. When the water receded, the canals were filled and the bell remained suspended. The loop for suspending the bell is decorated with sculptures of two mythical lions. However, history is silent about how the bell was cast and placed on the barges. Fortunately, the bell was damaged during an earthquake in 1839. On March 23rd, it fell to the ground because the supporting stone pillars were destroyed. However, the durability of the alloy ensured that the bell remained intact. The fall did not create a single crack, and the bell continues to enchant with its pure, melodious sound. It took many years, however, before the bell could be reinstalled. By 1896, a new structure was conceived. It featured reinforced concrete pillars with a steel beam on top to hang the bell. Sometime later, 
The bell ended up under the carved wooden roof of a pavilion built in the traditional style of small village temples. The Mingan bell's impressive specifications deserve great respect. It stands 3.5 meters tall, and when you add the metal suspension loop, the total height reaches 7 meters. The lower diameter is almost 5 meters, and the thickness of the walls varies from 15 to 30 centimeters in different places. The bell weighs 55,555 Burmese vis, which is more than 90 tons. It's remarkable how the founders managed to achieve such a size. This isn't just a random coincidence. The number 55,555 carries deep numerological significance. There are also five symbols resembling the number five on the surface of the bell. Another interesting detail is that the sound produced by the Mingan bell comes from striking its outer edge with a teak mallet, rather than being produced by a clapper, as is commonly the case with bells. Today, tourists are allowed free access to the bell. Moreover, they are encouraged to strike the bell as a gesture of respect for local traditions and as a sign of friendliness. You can even go inside if you bend over. Consequently, the inner surface of the bell is adorned with numerous graffiti in various languages from around the world. A Nuclear Repository in Africa Enrico Fermi, the creator of the world's first nuclear reactor, claimed that the chain reaction could only be initiated artificially. However, it turns out that nature invented a nuclear reactor long before humans. It started operating in Africa around 2 billion years ago and continued for about 500,000 years. The discovery of this natural reactor became a scientific sensation of the 20th century. Three years after the natural reactor in Oklo was discovered, a scientific conference was held, bringing together scientists from around the world to discuss various aspects related to the natural reactor and to assess the significance of this discovery. It had sparked heated debates among nuclear physicists. During this conference, the majority of its participants agreed that the Oklo site was the world's only known natural nuclear reactor. It spontaneously started about 2 billion years ago and operated for approximately 500,000 years. However, there was another group of conference participants who disagreed with this conclusion. According to them, too many factors had to coincide for a natural reactor to occur, and the probability of that happening was virtually zero. They also cited the impossibility of this phenomenon, as noted by the great Enrico Fermi. So, what did they propose as an alternative explanation for this phenomenon? These brave individuals ventured to suggest a hypothesis about the Oklo reactor's artificial origin. According to them, it could very well have been created by an ancient civilization that had harnessed atomic energy. However, the power of this nuclear plant was so low that, as they put it, it would have only been sufficient to power a few dozen toasters. However, no one insisted that the Oklo facility was actually a nuclear power plant. It was more often described as a nuclear waste repository. If it was indeed a repository, then it was designed remarkably, as no leaks of radioactive materials into the environment occurred during its considerable period of operation. Moreover, since there was a repository for spent nuclear fuel, there had to be reactors, too. But who did they belong to? A highly developed terrestrial civilization was unlikely to have existed 2 billion years ago. Conversely, paleoanthropologists do not exclude the possibility that it was the radiation in this region that could have caused mutations in African primates, contributing to their transformation into humans. Perhaps the reactors belonged to extraterrestrials who established a colony on Earth. They could have conducted long-term research here and even contributed to the development of life, including intelligent life on our planet. Experts also cannot understand how this reactor managed to survive earthquakes, stratum shifts, and vertical movements of the Earth's crust over 500,000 years of its operation. Any such event should have altered the configuration of the reactor and caused it either to shut down or explode. Furthermore, experts argue that the water required for the reactor's operation should have been extremely pure, and natural water sources would hardly satisfy this requirement. Axum Stele, the largest obelisk in Ethiopia, weighing 500 tons and standing 33 meters tall, is located in the town of Axum, 
It is made of bluish granite and is entirely covered with mysterious carvings. At present, this massive super monolith is lying shattered into several pieces. Not long ago, archaeologists made a stunning and astonishing discovery at this location. The hill where the so-called Stele Field is situated is a massive 115-meter-long platform constructed from dressed basalt slabs. During excavations, scientists determined that the stele are just the upper parts of a truly gigantic structure hidden beneath the ground. The most famous stela is the King Izana Stele, a 24-meter obelisk weighing 180 tons that has survived to this day. In 1937, after the invasion of Ethiopia by fascist Italy, the 24-meter Axum obelisk was cut into three parts by Italian soldiers and taken to Rome. Ethiopia has always considered the obelisk its natural heritage. In April 2005, Italy returned the obelisk to Axum and covered the transportation costs, amounting to $4 million. The obelisk is set on a hill that ancient builders transformed into a three-tiered platform made of massive slabs. The installation of the reconstructed cella, even piece by piece, required the use of the most powerful modern construction equipment. The obelisks are made from solid blocks of bluish basalt, one of the hardest types of rock. This particular basalt had to be specially transported to Axum since the nearest deposits of this rock are several kilometers away from the city. Officially, the stelae are dated to the first centuries of our era. However, there is a legend going around Axum claiming that they were raised by giant cyclops who could melt stone. They poured it into long wooden molds and when the stone cooled, they cut and polished it, and then transformed it into giant stelae. There is a photo of a rather strange object still circulating on the internet. According to some reports, it was found in Egypt. Today, this artifact is stored in the National Museum of Antiquities in Leiden, Netherlands, and amazes visitors with its unusual appearance. Substantial debates have arisen on the internet about this object because it strikingly resembles a control panel of some mechanism or spacecraft the artifact is made of alabaster and has the appearance of a disc. Its diameter is 49 centimeters, and it is about 13 centimeters tall. However, the object weighs 75 kilograms, which is quite peculiar, though it's possible there might be an error in the sources. This disc is intriguing due to its design. It is covered in numerous ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs and features several small recesses and holes. Basically, it all strongly resembles a control panel of a spaceship from some science fiction movie. Most sources point out that this artifact has not received an official explanation from scientists yet, indicating that even they don't know what this device is. Allegedly, there are no analogs of it in the world. But as it turns out, this is all just conspiracy theories. In reality, this remarkable object resembling a spaceship control panel is an ordinary round offering or sacrificial table it was placed in tombs. Water, aromatic oils, and sacrificial provisions were poured into the depression on its surface. The inscriptions provide detailed instructions on where to pour and place everything. Well, that's all for today, friends. Like the video if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments which of these you think is proof of alien life, and we'll see you next time.